Hello, Denpas. We're watching Kami san Wotakoi Watanai. Not true. <laughs> Not true at all. I don't know the name of the Completely show. Completely incorrect. It's like a shaft show. It's a, so here's here's the story. So one time, I was like, I'm gonna watch every anime with a hiki neat protagonist. Mm -hmm. So I tried to find all of them, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of them sucked. But this is one of them, and I was like, Yo, hiki protagonist, shaft anime, Akiyuki Shimbo, and it's experimental even as a Shinbo show. Mm -hmm. This has got to be the best thing ever made. And then I watched like one episode and got bored mm -hmm. and dropped it. But ever since then, I've been thinking, I've, it's just, ne it's stuck in my head. It's like, I don't know, just stuck in my head. I was like, what if, what if I was just not in the right mood to watch it? What if the show was actually good? What if it required another hiki neat to be present? Exactly. You're, you're not a hiki, ex, you're an ex hiki neat. How am I not a hiki need? You go outside all the time. I may go outside all the time, but that just means I'm a hiki in the streets. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, we're going to be watching Sasami-san at Gambaranai. Oh, I vaguely know of this show. Um, we're going to be not just watching it, but we're going to be laying around watching it. Mm -hmm. Until... Either it gets dropped or we finish it. Yes. Yeah. It's like some sort of either we finish it or if we fail or if we fail, it's a finish or fail kind of situation. Here. Uh huh. Um. And so, without further ado, Sasami San episode one. Shall we? Cheers, my friends. <laughs> Instantly, I want to be the character in this show. She literally has a big brother taking care of her every whim and tickling her every fancy as a need. I mean, it's the dream, although I would much rather be the main character but a guy and have a sister to but You know what I'm saying, but you know my opinion. We all know the proclivities going on here, okay? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't really remember why I was watching the show. I don't remember if it was like episode one or episode two. I just remember thinking it was boring. It's very clearly a shaft. It's so shindly. <laughs> <laughs> like the the way the cuts, the way the cuts are placed, um, and how it like zooms in on like esoteric parts of her body and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and baths. Yeah, the bath scenes. The yeah. the. Like, I mean, the the brother who just, like, covers his face all the time with <laughs> just objects. Like, that's, that's a little weird little thing. Yeah. Anyway, continuing. So, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck just happened. <laughs> Do you want to try to explain this? Okay. So, um, I'd, I'd forgotten the premise of this show until, like, halfway through the episode. Um, so, Sasami-san... The, the titular character seems to have the ability to, like, change the makeup of the world, I guess? Into chocolate. In this episode, specifically into chocolate, the whole world turns into chocolate. <laughs> you get a zoom out shot of all of Japan turned into chocolate, which is, I guess, the whole world. And, and at one point, there's a girl who's pretending to be a frog... And then there's another one with booby cannons, <laughs> and they fight. They fight the chocolate. They fight. They fight the. They, they fight the chocolate, <laughs> and then Ev Sasami turns into chocolate. The, the I suppose the fighting is what made the chocolate go away, and that's no. Why she but the, it seemed unnecessary because there was just the guy. She was just like. Now turn the make a copy of the world, and then the girl just did turn the world back to normal. So I don't know why they fought the chocolate. <laughs> I don't understand it at all. It's and not... she kept making really bad chocolate puns. Yeah, it's not exactly explained. Also, there's a surveillance state. There's a. The, it's literally panopticon. It's literally panopticon. It's so much so that I came up at the beginning of the show when she was like surveilling her her brother, who's seemingly very involved in this series uh in more ways than one she like has this brother cam where she can watch his every movement and where he is at all times and it it i couldn't get this phrase out of my head at the first of the episode 
this show is Panopticon, and that's why I'm AGP. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting. And it it has a meaning to it. I want to be her, because I want to be attracted to myself, and also to be an authoritarian state. Interesting. At the same time. Do you feel me? Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Translate it. I will translate. This show has induced a state of psychosis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because this show is, I'm pretty sure, written by someone undergoing psychosis. It feels like what psychosis feels That's like. That's what I'm saying. It yeah. feels like it's just sort of, it's got the free association, like, like psychosis stuff going on. It reminds me of this visual novel a little bit. Not really aesthetically, but just, like, the way plot events happen kind of reminds me of this visual novel called uh, Fushigi Densha, which was written by a guy who was... He was psychotic while he was writing it Mm -hmm. and drawing it and stuff. And it's just complete fucking nonsense. Mm. Um, And it reminds me of that, where it's very, like, free-associating, postmodern fruit salad, like, (laughs) kind of... Just sort of stuff happens. Yeah. But maybe we'll get more clarification as to what the fuck is happening in the later episodes. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. This was like a bombastic, like, first episode of a show. Oh, yeah. Show. Definitely, like, they put all the animation budget into this episode, as, yeah. as Shaft tends to do. There was actually... One of my favorite moments in the episode was... There was, a, a, a like, a big wanna where Sasami-san is just, like, getting changed... And there's just this wanna that just holds on her, like, very, like, methodically, just, like, changing clothes. It's not, like, sexualized or anything. It's, like, pulled back, flat camera angle. You just see her changing. And it just, like, you just, like, the very, like, satisfying, methodical process of just putting clothes on. Yeah. And I I don't know why, but I really liked that shot. It was very smooth animation. And the music choices, this this is another thing um, I noticed about the first episode is, like, uh, the music choice there is very interesting. Like, it fits perfectly. It's like this, I wouldn't say jazzy. It's like this, like, monotone kind of, like, beeps. Mm. It's like beeps. It's like beeps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, throughout the um, the duration of the episode, you get these music choices that feel very, like, unorthodox, but work perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like there's jazz type stuff going on. There's like elevator music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like a blues rock in like the fight scenes, like blues rock kind of yeah. thing. It's a, uh, it's nuts. It's nuts. It's absolutely <laughs> nuts. I mean, just the aesthetic of the show is it's like, it's, it's definitely got a lot of Shinboisms. I mean, it, it does the, like the wide angle lens close to the face thing that Shinbo does a lot. It does the frame within a frame stuff that Shinbo does a lot. Mm-hmm. The like, uh, like insert shots of sort of like in like extreme close up insert shots like lots of shimboisms but also it has a color palette that is not very shimboy like yeah. it has this sort of like hazy rainbow effect kind of everywhere mm. which is really interesting it's not like a I, I imagine that's from whatever the source material is i'm actually interested the show came out in 2013 i want to i want to know like more details Sami san Gambaranai. That has a low score on Mal. Yeah, because no one in, no one on Mal understands experimental thing unless it's like Mamoru Oshii. You know? <laughs> That's true. Uh, adaptation. Uh, I guess it's a light novel adaptation. That makes so much sense. That is that does make a lot of sense. If um, the author probably did write it under psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every light novel is written like that. <laughs> Who's involved? It, it's Shinbo directed it. No, yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, I guess uh, no one else I know about. I want to see if the Wikipedia page will say it was written um, under psychosis. <laughs> um, visual novel series written by Akira. Illustrations. Ba-da-da-da. Weekly Shonen Sunday. That's a pretty big magazine. Yeah. For such a weird... I mean, maybe the show is weirder than the light novels, but that's a weekly Shonen Sunday. Sunday. Oh, and then it, I guess it got downgraded to the, like, spin-off version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Um, 
Let's see, any information about the guy who made it? Not really. Anime official website, Anime News Network. Uh, well, I don't know what the fuck that is. This is just selling the DVD. Alright, I'm gonna look into this more. Also, I'm probably gonna... I'm kinda hungry, so I might get a snack and then watch the next episode. But while the intro is going on, I realized a couple things I wanted to mention. Firstly, the subs that we're watching kind of have some problems. Yeah, like there's a lot of times where I'm like, that's not what the characters are saying. It's kind of annoying. It's very localized. Yeah, it yeah. kind of sucks. The second thing is, at one point, the, I, I forgot to mention that, at one point the brother just starts doing the, the how he dance, and I thought <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> Alright. This show is kind of bad. <laughs> this show's kind of... It's a little bit awful. Like, we get to the second episode, and almost instantly, like, it's paced way too slow. I was fine with, like, at the beginning of the second episode, they're doing some world building, explaining, like, what the fuck was happening with, like, all yeah, of the chocolate. Yeah, world building. You mean a lore dump. The main yeah. character just basically talks directly into the camera and explains the lore. Yeah, you know, like a light novel adaptation. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently, like, her brother is God, and there are many gods. Her brother is Amaterasu, specifically. I don't know how much you know about Japanese mythology, but yeah. Amaterasu is, like, the Odin of the Japanese gods, like, the highest god. Yeah. Um, and so he wished for chocolate on Valentine's Day, and the world became chocolate as a result of these alterations that occur, which are, like, basically the... the divine system misfiring like overcorrecting for his wishes mm -hmm. is is the way i interpret it um and then apparently there are like these three sisters that the the fight that happened against the chocolate um it was a result of them like basically myth busting like trying <laughs> <laughs> like trying to get the the god spirit to go back into balance um and uh yeah, apparent, apparently that's what's going on, but now apparently they just play MMOs all day. The sister yeah. character is hanging out with with these, like, three sisters that were myth-busting before, and it, like... And the, and the teacher as well. And the teacher, and they're the just... The Tsundere teacher. And they're just playing MMOs together, and it's, like, painfully slow. It is very slow. And it also, it's, like, unlike the first, as I suspected, the first episode, very animated. The second episode, more like a slideshow <laughs> with lip flaps. Yeah, it was Like, a... it's, there's a lot of, like, slow panning shots over two characters, and it's just lip flaps and nothing else. Yeah. Um, suspiciously yeah. well-drawn feet. There were well. suspiciously well-drawn feet in this episode. Yeah. But, um... I want fan service of the male character, not the female ones. You don't even see his face. You don't even see his face! He covers it up with a briefcase! <laughs> it, it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about this show. Not Chino-pilled. It's definitely not Chino-pilled. I'm, I'm still kind of on board with it, but you seem to have completely... Yeah. It was, it was too much for you. <laughs> yeah, I went full, like, it's over. It's over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Pepe, it's over. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand, like, I mean, how do I put it? Mm -hmm. I just think that the show is not particularly competently put together, <laughs> just on a broad scale. Like, Yeah, I mean, they're adapting a light novel. Like, the light novel was probably written under psychosis. Like, maybe. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, like, I literally want to stimulate my brain as we watch this, but I can't. And you just want to speed up the world. Sure. Um, that, that's what you said. That is what I said. Yeah. I think, um... If, if, if you're thinking, like, I, 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 I can only enjoy this show if I'm inebriated, it's probably just a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be a bad show. Neither though. do I! I don't want... That's why I keep, I've been keep continuously thinking about the show since I dropped it for the first time. Like... It's such a good premise, and, like, the first episode was so charming, it should have just been a movie. It should have just been a movie that was produced in the same vein as the first episode. Yeah, or, like, a, a one-episode OVA or something. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I, I don't know why they... I, I don't know about this, but I'm willing to... I just have a high tolerance for bad anime. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to. 
It went away. Mm-hmm. It went away once I stopped smoking weed all the time. And you grew up as well. I think when you, yeah. like a lot of people, they, you know, you grow up, you you become more cynical about anime after you've watched like a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I, I started needing every anime to be Rakugo Shinju. <laughs> That is a great show. That is one of the best, if not the best shows. Agreed. Yeah. It's really good. Also, um, you like Rescue Wings, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I also like Rescue Wings. Yeah. Um, I like her. Which one? Right there. There's like a lot. Which one? Chino? Yeah. Oh, you don't even like that show. I do. You've is, seen Gotchi Is Is the Order of Rabbit, yeah. Yeah, which, have you seen just the first season? Yeah. I see. I like her. Yeah, she's great. I I'm, love not, Chino. I'm not a pedophile, though. That doesn't I, don't, mean I don't like her like that. She's literally a pedo dog whistle. That's not true at all. That's how caress or that's how people use her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I just think she's a good character. Mm-hmm. The thing is, when trans women talk about wanting to be women, oh, well, you can't wanna... just not, you can't just not do this for ten seconds. <laughs> they they just want to be that. Who wouldn't, to be fair? <laughs> I, I agree. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not one of those people. Sure. Yeah. A wise man, I'm not gonna say that. Okay. Yeah. Um We've, So I think you're calling it quits here. I'm calling it quits here. And I'm I'm gonna keep watching it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna keep smoke crack. Don't, we don't have any crack. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you you don't either. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what I get through TSA? There's no way you have crack. <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay, well, interesting. So Sami San continued alone. Yeah, the show is really slow and boring. I understand why I thought it was slow and boring for the first time. Because it definitely becomes slow and boring. But I would just... Unlike Sasami-san, who, who gambara nais, I'm gonna gambare through it. It's day two of Sasami-san. I couldn't finish it all in one day, um, because this show is very strange. <laughs> the show is very, um, it's quite hard to watch. Uh, it doesn't lend itself super well to marathoning, but also, I was thinking... The reason I stopped watching it yesterday is because I wanted to be able to really absorb it. And at the time, I felt like I was kind of, um, my mind was wandering a lot, and I wasn't really in a headspace where I could absorb it. Because this show is extremely strange, it's extremely unique. Sasami-san is both one of the worst shows I've ever seen, and simultaneously one of the best shows I've ever seen. It has... It flip-flops between genius, like, it rides the line. It rides the line of genius and idiot, like, perfectly. And so you'll get, like, one scene that I'm like, that's fucking crazy, amazing, wicked, insane, crazy, sick. And then the next scene, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> like, this makes no sense. What is happening? Um, it, it just rides this, like, line perfectly where... I feel like it's simultaneous, it's got, it's definitely got something to it, and I really want to get at that, because, like, this show does have something that really appeals to me, um, it's got the dream logic, kind of surrealist, almost Denpa-y vibe that I really like in, in media, um, it's got Shinbo's directing style, who's my favourite anime director, it's got, like, um, kind of interesting weird themes to do with Shintoism, which is also something I'm very interested in. It's got sort of a, a hikini protagonist, at least at first. Um, uh, it's, it's got, it's got all sorts of, in, and it's got a lot of like anime, otaku culture in references, in jokes, and also an extremely experimental, like art house, like very shinbo presentation. It's not like it's not like Madoka, which is kind of like Shinbo, like, dulled down. It's like the opposite. It's like, like, Soul Taker or something. It's, it's just extra, or, or Portrait de la Petite Cosette. It's like high, high Shinboism, um, experimental, even for Shinbo, because it's not just that the visuals are experimental. You know, Shinbo is one of these directors who will, even on a show that is 
somewhat straightforward, like Soul Taker, for example, um, he will go wacky with the visuals. Whereas this show is both extremely experimental in terms of script, in terms of plot, in terms of characters, and in terms of world, and also has this, this layer of Shinboism on top of it. Um, it's, I kept describing it as feeling like a psychosis, because it has this sort of free association logic where events just sort of happen without, um, like, there's not really a sort of clear causality in the way you would expect. And this is, I think, why sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't work at all. Uh, like, generally speaking, when you're writing a story, one of the important rules is um, to really pay attention to motivation and causality. So, um, rather than saying this happens, then this happens, then this happens, you should write a story which is this happens, and so as a result of that, this happens, and then because that happened, that causes this to happen. You know what I mean? Like, like there should be a very clear chain of events that, that causes these. Uh, you look at any, like, more traditional, like, story in any medium, and they follow this kind of pattern. But this is obviously like any rule in art, it's a rule you can break. I think David Lynch is like the master of breaking this rule. Um, and this show also breaks the rule in, in a very extreme way. Um, you know, similar to a lot of, of Lynch's movies. It, not really in tone, like I, I, it's not similar in tone at all, or like presentation really. But I'm talking in, in terms of structure. Sorry, just... Boom. Okay, in terms of like... Um, the structure of the story where events don't necessarily follow from previous events and it can be kind of hard to understand characters' motivations. They sort of just act in, in as I said, sort of a dream logic kind of way. And I think it that comes with a couple of, of sort of strange side effects. Because sometimes it works really, really well and it creates like interesting novel concepts and ideas where you're like, what the fuck is happening? This is amazing. And sometimes you're like, what the fuck is happening? I can't follow what's happening. This is just kind of like, I can't, what's happening? Like, it's, like, it, it's very hard to get into a story and get sucked into a story that you actually can't follow because there is no thread to follow. There is no... Oh, that's my groceries. I've got to go get that. So, an example of where this sort of, like, non sequitur, threadless <laughs> plot or stories come in really into play is in the characters, um, and I think it sometimes causes a lot of problems. Like, the example I would give is, so, Sasami, the main character, um, spoil mild spoilers, the, uh, she, she, at the start of the show, is, is a hikikomori, she doesn't go outside, she, uh, and she's too, and it's shown multiple times, like, when she goes outside, kind of like, you know, the, the, so, as I was saying, um, at the start of the show, Sasami is a hikikomori, and every time she goes outside, there's scenes, kind of like that flashback scene in Welcome to the NHK, where, like, everyone's laughing at him when he goes out, like, to, to university, like, that sort of, you, you know what I'm talking about, the, the world starts warping, that sort of thing. And, um, I think, you know, having Sasami be a hiki is characterization, it shows the sort of person she is. But then, a few episodes in, um, you get a kind of an arc where she goes, she, she has to go outside to rescue her brother. And it's like, a, it, you know, they've had it set up that she can't go outside, it sucks. And then one of the characters helps her and holds her hand and it makes her okay with being outside. And it's like, oh yes, character development. Like, that's, that's fine, that's, that's alright, you know. Like, oh, with the help of her friends, she's able to overcome her fears. Character development. But then... Later in the, uh, in, I think even later in the episode or in the next episode, this is what happens. Oh yeah, by the way, the reason I couldn't go outside is because there was an evil god who was stopping me from doing it. But don't worry, we dealt with him off camera, so now I'm fine. <laughs> that's what happens. And that's just bad storytelling. I'm sorry, like, that, once that sort of thing starts happening, I'm, I'm kind of checked out. I'm like, please, at least, like, that's dumb already. But even if it is dumb, at least show me it on camera. Like, even if it's dumb, you could make it into, like, some sort of metaphor for, like, the evil god is her fear and anxiety and so on. But no, it's just literally an evil god, and they literally dealt with it off-camera. <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's the sort of 
emblematic of the problems with the script in this show. But, so just as many times as there's stuff like that, which completely doesn't work for me, there's stuff that I think is, like, really unique, really funny, or really interesting. Like, the most recent episode, just the premise of the episode, which is, or not most recent, but the one I just watched, the premise of the episode is Sasami is, sort of wanders into the house, and finds a DVD player, it's also really, in I, I like how it connects with the previous episode, because at the end of the previous episode, Sasami is over being a hikikomori, and she's like, I'm gonna go, gakkon ikimasu, right, like, I'm gonna go to school, and she's all bright and cheery, and it ends with her, like, going off to school, and then the beginning of the next episode is her being like, school is so much effort, <laughs> just like, coming out, I thought that was a really, that was really good, um, and then, she goes and she goes home, she finds this DVD player, and the DVD is like all stuff of like videoing her, but she doesn't remember any of it. She's doing all of these things that she doesn't remember doing in the DVD, and she's just watching it like, what the fuck is all of this? And then it actually has a plot, like, it's all explained, like it all actually makes sense in the plot. It's very absurdist, like the way it makes sense doesn't make sense, but like that's fine, it works. Um and, like, that is a, like, the way it's set up is a really interesting concept. Like, what would you do if you found a DVD full of stuff that is filming you that you don't remember doing? And all of your friends are there talking about it. Like, that's a really interesting concept. And, um, I thought it was done really well. And, yeah, I mean, I just thought it was cool. I thought it was a, re a really cool episode. And the way it ends is satisfying. I mean, it gets very absurd. Like, like, the, the plot kind of goes from a fairly simple thing to a very absurd, like, ab absurdly big thing with, 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 that doesn't, you know, very dream logic -y, as I've said a million times, which is fine, like, I like that. And then, but it, it still manages to have a satisfying conclusion at the end where everything sort of makes sense and you understand why she doesn't remember the DVD and what the DVD is. And I thought that was good. So there's, there's as many times as the show fucks up, it also gets things really good, really right. And it's kind of hard to get straight in my head, so... I'm gonna keep watching it, and, um, who knows? That was a weird episode. It was weird by how not weird it was. It just had a very normal anime plot until right at the end when they suddenly worked in the lore of the show in the last, like, five minutes of the episode. It was just a very left, like, out of left field, it just has a normal kind of trite, bad anime episode with, like, standard, fair, high school melodrama, but then right at the end they work in the lore. I don't know, I don't know if that, it, I don't know, I don't know, I wouldn't say it worked? I don't know, very strange, very odd. Um... It was it was odd for how suddenly it became a normal show for one episode, and now it's back to being weird again. I mean, it still had the weird visual hallmarks, and that, that episode did have some funny visual gags and stuff, but it was kind of... It was just surprising to see such a, a random episode of standard anime bullshit in this show which is full of very non-standard anime bullshit. I also want to mention this anime's similarities to Haruhi, just because I feel like I have to. Um, it's, it's a little like anti-Haruhi, where Haruhi was a girl who didn't know she was God, who wished for her life to be more interesting, and thus created all of these characters around her. Sasami is a girl who, when she did it, she didn't know she was God, but she knows she's God, and she wants her life to be peaceful, and created characters around her to protect that peaceful life. So it's kind of like the flip side, the opposite of Haruhi. And there are other similarities, I mean, the show makes reference to Haruhi a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that bad mentioning, or bore, that bore mentioning. I'm just gonna be honest here, I'm hella cunt cost for lackeying this show. Like... Like, this show is just bad at this point. There was a time, like, the first episode was good. The second episode, meh. The third episode, good. And then, I don't, I can't remember the rest of them. But, um, a lot of it is just sort of, like, for such a weird show, 
that was kind of the appeal was like even if it's bad it's at least like bad in an interesting way whereas the past two episodes like the the last really good one was the one with the security or the one with the DVD that was like memories that Sasami didn't have but now it's sort of just fallen into a rhythm of fairly generic episodes that are like disappointingly unoriginal or they don't really do enough with the how do I put it the, with the unique aspects of the show and that's kind of disappointing I suppose but for some reason I've convinced myself that like the show's gonna get better towards the end I don't know why I don't know how I've convinced myself of this, but I'm getting just a vague sense that that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, well, I guess what's actually... Like, all of the dream logic plot type stuff has just disappeared. Um, and it's just sort of... episodic anime type beats, which is a little boring. And doesn't play to the show's strengths. Because the pacing kind of sucks. And the script isn't great either. So, yeah. I'm going to stick with it, even though, just to let you know, that, like, by all logical means, I should have dropped this show. I'm so disappointed with this show. I thought, like, at the very least, I'm good. Even if it's, like, weirdly paced and awkward or whatever, and, like, the storytelling is bad, I was like, at least I'm going to get something interesting and unique. And then it just sort of turned into, like, fairly generic, which is really disappointing. And the Shinboisms have been, like, toned down as well. Like, the experimental presentation is, is like, toned down as the show goes on. That's very annoying. Um, if I had to compare it to anything, you know, like, originally I compared it to Fushigi Densha, but it doesn't stay that way for very long. If I had to compare it to something like that... Maybe, like, Katana Gattari or some other, like, maybe, like, certain parts from the Monogatari series, but the least interesting parts from the Monogatari series, like, the parts that are just sort of the fights, like, that sort of thing. Pardon me. Oh, I know why I'm burping. Um, but yeah, like, kind of disappointing. I mean, very disappointing. Uh, that, like, I mean, I, I was like, at least I can get something interesting out of this. And it became something fairly generic. And it also toned down the comedy, like, loads. Which is sucked, because I thought it was really funny. Um, yeah, I don't know, a really disappointing show. Not, not amazing. Not amazing. Do I gotta say? Look, honestly, I should drop it. But I'm I'm sunk cost. I'm on I'm on episode I'm on episode nine. Like I feel like I may as well finish the show. Since I'm so close, at least I get a couple more hours on my mouth for the grind set. A little more XP. Um, another show completed. Um. But yeah, no, I I gotta say. Do not recommend Sasami san Gambaranai. Um, yeah, can't. Unfortunately, I would say maybe check out the first episode, just because that's kind of a unique first episode and it's interesting. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the whole show, at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty pretty disappointing. Okay, look, it's that, day that three. Really us, uh, it's day three. I uh, think we're just gonna call it here. Sort of, uh, I've given this show more of a chance than like any other show I've seen. This is like top ten shows I've given a chance to. Okay, I really tried to like this show. I really, really wanted to like it. I really tried to like it, but we're, we just gotta call it here. Okay. There's just a level of like I gotta give up on my sunk cost fallacy. I'm just thinking, uh, I've got four episodes left, and I'm just like, do I really want to wait, waste an hour of my life watching this dog shit show? No, I do not. I'm just going to call it, I, I just can't force myself to sit through this anymore. Dropped.
Sasami-san Gambaranai dropped.